Hello, I'm Bill Bullard with RCAF USA, the voice of the independent cattle producer in the United States of America. Well, what if you invested in a business that supplies products to a profitable industry, but the price you receive for your product only reaches profitable levels when the total volume of similar products in the supply chain is drastically reduced? But let's make that clear. What if you invested in a cattle ranch, which supplies cattle to the profitable beef industry, but your cattle prices only reach profitable levels when the total supply of cattle is drastically reduced, say from a widespread natural disaster like drought. But don't make the mistake of concluding that there must be too many U.S. ranches if profitability is dependent on drastic reductions in total cattle numbers. This simply can't be the case, because America's cattle farms and ranchers don't produce enough cattle to satisfy America's demand for beef. And that helps explain why about 20% of beef available in the United States is imported. So back to the question, what would you do if your ranch's profitability was dependent on widespread disasters that drastically reduce U.S. cattle numbers? Well, here's three choices. A, you sell the ranch. B, you borrow more money in hopes that you can make it to the next disaster and that you won't be a part of that disaster. Or C, you join together with other ranchers to fix the industry. Well, if you want to be a cowboy, you won't pick A. And if you want to be a cowboy for long, you'll try to avoid B. But if you want your children to have the opportunity to be cowboys, you'll choose C, the one where you join together to fix your industry. But let's break this down and determine if the proposition is even true. Is profit potential in the cattle industry really dependent on widespread natural disasters? Well, let's look at two segments of the cattle supply chain over the past 15 years the cow-calf producer, and the cattle feeder. Now, the cattle supply chain starts with the cow-calf producer, and U.S. Department of Agriculture data show that the cow-calf producers earned negative returns on average during the five years leading up to the widespread drought that occurred from 2011 to 2013. At the conclusion of the drought, and for the next two years, cow-calf returns, which measures profitability, increased substantially exceeding an average $350 return for each bred cow. But then cattle prices collapsed for the next six years, and so did the returns. By 2019, returns to cow-calf producers fell to the lowest level in nine years. Then beginning this year, another widespread drought occurred, making it eight years since the end of the last big drought, and prices to cow-calf producers again began increasing. Now for the feeding sector, which is at the end of the cattle supply chain. They too earn negative returns on average during the five years leading up to the 2011 to 2013 drought. But unlike the cow-calf producers, whose profitable returns jumped after the conclusion of the drought, the feeding sector's returns started to increase during the last year of the drought and through most of the next year, exceeding an average return of about $27 per head. But then fed cattle prices collapsed, and so did the feeding sector's returns. For the next seven years, their losses averaged over $68 per head per year. Then the widespread drought that began last winter is again beginning to increase fed cattle prices. A year ago, fed cattle prices were at $130 per hundredweight. Six months ago, they sold in the $140 per hundredweight range, and today they're in the $150 per hundredweight range. So these rising fed cattle prices during the past year must be making the feeding sector quite profitable, right? But wait, rising prices do not mean profitability if the cost of feeding cattle increases faster than the cattle prices. And that's exactly what's happening. Despite the fact that fed cattle prices have been rising throughout this year, returns to cattle feeding have remained deep in the red, with per head losses averaging over $66 per head through October. In November, with fed cattle prices north of $150 per hundredweight, cattle feeders may be able to eke out about a $40 per head profit, but only after suffering horrendous losses for months and months. Now, what I've described for both cow-calf producers and cattle feeders during a period of about 15 years is an industry that is not economically sustainable. It's an industry with a broken market. So if you want to be a cowboy or stay a cowboy, then you'd best get to work to fix your industry's broken market. And if you want to help to accomplish that, then go to our website at www.r-callfusa.com. That's www.rcalfusa.com to join with us. With that, have a productive week. Thank you and goodbye.